There are many art directors out there with unique styles of filmmaking that manage to make a name for themselves in the mind of cinephiles, but they often have some trouble going mainstream and, well, they probably don't even want to anyway. Those directors such as Takashi Miike or Yorgos Lantimos tend to make films who offer some of the most bizarre and surreal experiences you could imagine. Their films often approach some dark and taboo subjects or themes and well, it's easy to imagine why general audiences might be put off by it. Now, of course, since I'm a giant film nerd, and if you follow this channel, you probably are as well, we tend to love movies like these because they're not afraid to show you something different, something exciting. They explore situations and characters that you'll never see in mainstream cinema. All of those directors have their own style, and I could make a whole video about how I feel about each and every one of them. But today, I'd like to start with Austrian director Michael Haneke, since he's one of the first oddball directors that I discovered as a teenager, and also because I've recently seen his 2001 film The Piano Teacher, and I'm pretty sure it's his best work, in my opinion. So I'd like to specifically focus on this film and identify what makes the style of Haneke, how it manages to provoke emotion, and why I believe his approach works best in this film in particular. But first, let's briefly go over Haneke's style and what makes his films unique. Mikhail Haneke is known for using a naturalistic approach to filmmaking. His films often feature a small cast of characters struggling with feelings of estrangement and depression, while also sometimes examining social issues like the power struggles in different sorts of relationships, from parenthood to adolescence, or even, as we shall see, between teacher and student. From a stylistic point of view, he likes to use long, uninterrupted takes that give his actors plenty of room to carry out the emotional baggage of the scene. The editing is kept very minimal and simple, and he makes very little use of music. This documentary style realistic approach combined with the controversial topics these films often portray make the end result a very uncomfortable experience. He wants the viewer to feel everything happening on screen as if we were in the room with these characters. Haneke has released a number of films fitting this description over the years that gave him a reputation and made him a regular favorite of the Cannes Film Festival. One of those films was the winner of the festival's Grand Prix in 2001, which was The Piano Teacher, starring Isabelle Huppert and Benoît Magimel. The film is an adaptation of the 1983 novel of the same name by Ilfried Jelnik. Sorry for my German. It tells the story of an unmarried piano teacher at the Vienna Conservatory living with her mother in a state of emotional and sexual disequilibrium, who also enters a sadomasochistic relationship with one of her students. From the get-go, you can already guess why this film would be controversial. The bold, brutally realistic style of Haneke paired with the topic of sexual distress and alienation is the perfect mix for some classic Cannes Festival scandals. No, monsieur, votre accent sur C'est scandaleux! C'est lamentable de faire des choses pareilles! However, after seeing most of Haneke's filmography before watching this film, I was a little used to it. Funny Games had quite an impact on me and so did Benny's video, but that's pretty much all I got away from them impact. These films were shocking to a degree without being gratuitous, but they seemed a little too distant and cold for me to really get any fascination. Most of the time, I thought his films lacked strong characters that you would get attached to. Aesthetically and intellectually, they had everything to charm me, but the backbone of story wasn't really there. And this is where I think The Piano Teacher stands out. It is a character study that succeeds in making you empathize with its main character. So how did Haneke pull it off in this film? Well, first of all, the main character by the name of Erika has a progression through the course of the story where she starts off as this extremely distant and cold-hearted woman, only to slowly lose her calm and powerful facade after she starts opening up to Walter, the student who has a crush on her. And even in the film's first half, the dichotomy of Erika's internal struggle is made clear when we witness the two sides of the life that she lives. We very quickly understand the levels of repressed feelings and impulsions she must have. This made me empathize with her character a lot more than the ones in Funny Games, for example, or the lead character in Benny's video, since her internal struggle is made very clear in the first act. Secondly, the film makes good use of conflict, incorporating it perfectly with Haneke's naturalistic style. Moments of tension are simply scenes of dialogue that serve as an emotional battlefield, albeit a quiet one. The scenes where Walter tries to seduce Erica and break through her high school persona are where the action really happens. Les indications de Schubert vont du cri au murmure et non de parler fort à parler doucement. L'anarchie ne semble pas être votre fort, Clémère. Pourquoi ne pas vous en tirer à Clémenti Schubert était un type assez laid, vous le savez, non Vous avec votre physique, vous ne reconnaissez pas un abîme lorsque vous y tombez. Pourquoi essayez-vous de détruire ce qui pourrait nous rapprocher Le maniérisme n'est pas une panacée. Vous ne pas que je ne peux pas vous regarder Je 
ne peut pas vous regarder parce que si je vous regarde, je ne pourrais pas résister à la tentation de vous embrasser dans le cou. Puis je vous embrasser dans le cou, Erika. Furthermore, the stakes slowly rise as the story progresses, with Erika revealing more and more to Walter about her true desires, and later on changing her behavior to avoid losing his care and attention. This change is handled very well, mostly because of Isabel Bear's incredible performance, but also because we've empathized with her character from the very beginning. We've seen how trapped she is and feels, how repressed she has lived her entire life, and we understand why she's developed this cold facade as a way of keeping other people at bay and avoid risking getting emotionally attached. We've seen how unbearably controlling her mother is with her, and how she was raised to believe that her career is the only thing in her life that truly matters. This makes the film's final act all the more tragic, and when the moments of shock do arrive, they have a lot more impact because of how involved the spectator has become. This is why I believe it's Haneke's best film. Although Amour is very close to this in terms of emotional impact, this film resonated more with me. I've seen several other attempts to portray characters struggling with sexual deviancy on film, most notably in 2011 with Steve McQueen's Shame, but I feel like none of them really nailed the uncomfortableness of this topic, quite like the piano teacher did. But what do you think? Is this Mikhail Haneke's best film, or am I just completely wrong? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content just like this one, it really helps a lot. Until next time, take care of yourself, I'll see you in two weeks.